Yeah, yeah, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy Devon Terrell in raw form, and welcome to a Help Me Devon Raw Theory. And today, in this particular raw theory, I'll be going over or basically trying to figure out what is the difference between multi mono bouncing and stereo bouncing. Now, I know a lot of you may be saying, well, what do you mean when you're talking about either one? When you usually bounce out your songs, it's usually in stereo. You take that stereo file and you send that off to the mastering engineer, engineer, or you have that stereo file and you play it on your speakers. A long time ago, I made a small mistake, and I made a mistake and bounced a multi-mono file. What is a multi-mono file? Well, it's a file that independently bounces two files of your song a left channel and a right channel. And when you put them back together in your DAW or play them together side by side, you have a stereo file. That's essentially what a stereo file is. My question to you is, is there a difference sonically between the two? Does one sound better than the other? Does multi mono sound better than a stereo bounce? Now I've experiment with, with, experimented with this uh, a lot. And what I find myself wind up liking is I kind of like that multi mono sound. Now a lot of people say there is no difference, but I'm here today and I'm gonna show you some examples and maybe we can get to the bottom of is there a difference? Does it sound better? This might change the way you bounce your files when it comes to going to mastering after. Let's get right into this. Now the first thing that I did was uh, I bounce two files. I bounce one file that's multi mono and another file that's stereo. So both of them look the same because obviously it is what it is. It's a left channel and a right channel. Playing cause boys don't cry. Okay, so for some of you, and you can play that back uh, again and again, I notice a difference. Uh, there's been times where I've actually like the stereo file bounce over the multi mono uh, file bounce. Now that's up to for us, up to you to decide. But the thing that we're trying to figure out right now is there is a difference. I can hear it if you're using headphones or if you're playing on actual monitors. I'm telling you now, there is a difference, and these are the same exact files bounce the same exact way. Only difference is. One was bounced as a multi mono, and then the other was bought as a stereo file. So I started to dig deeper and try to figure this out. The first test that we could do to kind of figure out this difference is we could do a null test. Now, without getting so deep and so mundane as far as this definition of a null test, let me just explain it real quick and simple. A null test is basically a test where you have, let's say, two audio files. Now, if I have two audio files, think about a waveform. A waveform travels like this, up and down, up and down. Now, if I put another audio file on top of that, it's gonna be like this, up and down, up and down. They're together, right? Now, what if I take one of those audio files and I invert the phase, meaning this is how it looks now. It's like this. Now, these files are going up and down, up and down. How should that sound? it should cancel each other out completely because they're the exact same waveforms constantly crossing each other and canceling each other out. That's a null test. So let's do a null test and let's take the stereo bounce and put it against a copy of the stereo bounce and invert one of uh, the phase of one of them. What should we hear? Absolutely nothing, meaning they're exactly the same. Let's do that right now. Let's go right here. So this right here, this file that you see me soloing, is a stereo bounce. This one on the side of it is also a stereo bounce. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this trim tool, which has an invert button right here, which flips the phase, and I'm gonna play them against each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press play, I'm gonna bypass my trim tool, meaning I'm bypassing the actual phase inversion, and then I'm going to basically press play, I'm going to turn this on, and when I press this, we should hear absolutely nothing, meaning these are files are exactly the same. And I know they're exactly the same because I copied and pasted the, the actual stereo file. So, let's try it out. Here comes our first null test. Playing cause boys don't cry. Boys don't 
nothing. Don't cry. You never see the nothing. Okay, so we proved a null test. Basically, two files that are exactly the same. If you take one and copy it and paste it and then flip the phase of it, it should sound like nothing. You should hear nothing. Why? Because they're exactly the same. So, why did I do this? Let's take our stereo file and let's take our multi mono file. The same, I guess, right? Let's flip the phase of one of them and let's see what it sounds like. Now, if you hear anything when we flip the phase, this is basically telling you the difference between the two files. So the noise or the sounds that you hear when the phase is inverted is telling you, hey, this is the difference between the two files. These sonics that you're hearing when we flip the phase of one of them and let one rock is the difference. So we're gonna hear the difference between the two files when we flip the invert, uh, invert, in, uh, invert the phase. Let's do this. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the invert right here on the stereo file and then this is my multi mono file let's blow these up so you can really see them and get an idea so this is my multi mono file up here and then this is my stereo file down here so i'm going to solo those together and what i'm going to do is i've got my trim tool here which basically is the way i'm flipping the phase i'm pressing this little button right here and let's take it off so it's not on and then midway through, I'm going to turn it on. This is going to let us hear the difference between the two files, or if there's a difference at all. Let's go. Now, what did that tell me when I first did that? And of course, I, after I was kind of mind blown about it, like, oh, okay, there is a difference here. Now, what I was trying to figure out was, what is the difference? Two things that I did notice off bat. I noticed that the low end is not there at all, which tells me that the low end wasn't really changed uh, between the multi mono and the stereo. And I said to myself, well, Low end typically resides in more of the mono uh, kind of image of an entire file if, if you bounce it. So I thought to myself, maybe it's not frequencies that are, are different on that multi mono and stereo, but maybe it's the actual image itself. Because if there's a difference in the image as far as where things are actually placed, then that would mean that there's a, uh, that the, the, the null test would basically let us hear those differences. And that's what we're hearing. So you notice, again, you'll notice there's no low end. The low end is completely gone, which tells us that between the multi mono and stereo file, those, uh, that particular frequency range or the low end is the same. It's the same. What we're noticing the differences is more of that top end and mid range range to prove this to you this is what I'm gonna do I'm going to play a st the stereo file one and the stereo file duplicate which are exactly the same right we did the null test on those that they're exactly the same and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the pan on one of the stereo knobs of uh, one of the stereo files and see if there's a difference now if I move the pan and all of a sudden you start to hear stuff then that means that the image can affect the actual uh, uh, difference in the file when it comes to our null. Stay with me, just check this out. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna change the pan on one of these as it's playing. So obviously when I press play on this right now, nothing is gonna play at all. Why is nothing gonna play at all? Because they're the exact same file, but we're gonna flip the phase on one of them, which is the null test. It'll let us know, hey, these are exactly the same. You flip the phase, I hear nothing. So I'm gonna turn the pan on one of the knobs to see if that affects what uh, actually gets canceled out uh, in the actual file. All right, so let's take this off first. Let's bypass our phase inversion invert, excuse me, and then what I'll do is I'll put it on and then I'll start a pan. Okay, the phase invert is on. This is on. Now let's start to move the pan pot right here. Let's see if it makes. Oh, 
okay, so that right there proves that if uh, basically stereo image can change the way that these waves are, are actually engaging with each other. It, it proves that stereo image can play a part of this. So let's get a little bit deeper into our experiment. From here, we're getting somewhere and trying to figure out what is this difference that we're hearing between multi-mono and stereo, which you choose uh, when it's up to you which one you like better and the sound of, because now there's a sonic difference between the two and you're trying to figure out, well, which one do I like better? And this is something to keep in mind. Let's check it out. So what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna look and open up. Let's go to our multi-mono file first. And let's open up a scope and what we're going to do is we're going to use this scope of this vector scope to basically analyze our stereo image of our files now what i'm going to do is this i'm going what i'm trying to really figure out is i'm trying to see hey in the multi mono file is there a difference in the stereo image between the stereo file now there's one thing that i did find in the multi mono file there was a moment in particular that was very different from a moment in the stereo file in its image. I found this super interesting. I want you to pay attention to this. Check this out. So what I did was I noticed that there was a slight spike on the right hand side that you're going to see right here. So I'm going to bring these down a bit. And what I want you to do is I want you to pay attention to these meters right quick. I'm going to put it right here. And you're going to notice a difference between the two files as far as the stereo image. So remember what you're looking for. I'm going to play this. You're going to look at my uh, my the polarity as far as the uh, image on the vector scope. And you're going to see a difference in the files as far as, hey, it's hitting, it's hitting over here in the stereo field, but it's not hitting like that on the other file, which means there's a difference in the stereo image. So let's check it out. Watch this, I'll point it out to you. Also take into account, I turned off the invert, the phase switch. I turned off the phase switch, meaning both of these files are playing as is for what they are, multi-mono versus stereo. Let's look at the stereo image. Again, pay attention to this. On the left-hand side for the right, this is basically the multi mono file. I notice a spike on the right hand side as far as the right side of the image. Pay attention to this. This is a difference between the one on the left or the stereo bounce. Watch this again. Now let's look at that on the stereo file. Let's see, does that moment happen where it kong, that moment kind of happens. Does that happen on the stereo file? Let's look. That moment isn't there. And what it kind of gives me an idea or insight into, and I would love anyone's opinion on this, I noticed that there is a difference in the stereo image. Even when I'm looking at the stereo image at, uh, file as it is playing, I'm noticing slight variations in the actual image itself, which if I do a null test on, tells me it'll only let me hear the differences or the differences in the stereo image. So in my head, I say to myself, or I'm coming to a realization that it's not the frequency content that's different as far as, is it more high quality as far as reproducing those frequencies, but more or less, it feels like it's a difference in the stereo image. Now, granted, that makes sense because it's a multi-mono file in the stereo file. I check my phase. They're both not having these crazy phase issues or anything like that. So the only reason I did this entire experiment is because I just want to open the conversation. I'm not saying I'm right, wrong, or anything. I'm literally just opening up the conversation. I want you guys to comment below. I want you guys to investigate. I want a mastering engineer to, to give me some insight because this is something that I've been actually, bat not battling with, but just trying and experiment with here and there. Sometimes I bounce the multi-mono and I like the sound of it. I've even heard occasions where a mastering engineer axis for multi mono files so I want to know and get deeper into the science maybe there'll be a part two to this video if you guys comment below and give me more uh, 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 drive or more information on how we could possibly figure this out I guarantee you there's a mastering engineer